Good morning. Welcome to worship. This morning it is good to be with you on this Sunday in May as the sky is blue and the sun is out and there is a promise of 60 degree weather in the forecast, if not today. It can't be better, except for if we didn't lose an hour's sleep. But glad that you are here, that you remembered to set your clocks ahead so that you are on time. I'm sure soon we'll see people running in because they forgot, and we'll just ignore them and just be glad that they're here with us this morning. There are a few things I would like to draw your attention to, things that are happening in the life of the church. Actually, lots of things that are happening in the life of the church. My, my notes are um, quite prolific this morning, so bear with me. Um, Last Sunday was the first Sunday in Lent, which means that our one great hour of sharing fish banks are out and about, and if you would like to adopt a fish and feed it, lots and lots of yummy coins, you can. There's some located the back table in in Calvin Hall and wherever, and if you can't find one, you can ask myself or you can ask Martha, and we will gladly find you one as we want everybody to be able to feed their fish uh, throughout this Lenten season. And those are due back on Palm Sunday. And so hopefully you will partake in that um, great tradition that we have. This afternoon following worship today, we're having our, um, our first of many fellowship and hospitality events. And it is going to be a fish fry lunch. And hopefully you RSVP'd for that lunch. Um, and it will take place downstairs in the dining room following worship. And... Uh, I'm not sure that we will have a lot of extra, Um, but it's always, I always find we're like loaves and fishes here that there's usually plenty. Um, So don't let it stop you if you didn't sign up um, because we can always share. So hopefully you will join us for that time of fellowship and eating together and that will be downstairs in the dining room again following worship today. Our Lenten activities continue uh, this week with um, Monday yoga, beginner's yoga at 10 a.m. over in Millard Hall, and invite everybody, every skill level to come for a time of of stretching of mind and body, Um, and that's led by um, Martha Slocum, who is a yoga instructor, and uh, invite you to come to that. Um, And that is every Monday in in Lent, so from now until the 11th of April. Um, So come as you're able and join in that time. Also, our uh, Tuesday small group doing the Lent in Plain Sight study continues to meet. That's at 1030 on Tuesday in um, Jenks Lounge over in the main building there. And anyone is welcome to join that at any time as well. Each lesson kind of stands on its own, and it's a good time of conversation and reflection on various objects, ordinary objects that are used in extraordinary ways. Um, Midweek at Midtown continues on Wednesday with, with dinner at 5.45, and this week I've been told um, our youth group is uh, cooking dinner. Actually, Sean Krupa is, is in charge of dinner, and he has um, wrangled the youth group to help him cook, and um, I'll tell you a little Some I don't think he's in here. I just saw him run out, I think. Um, Sean wants to go to culinary school. So if you um, crave good food, uh, this Wednesday is the time to come. Dinner's at 545, and everyone is welcome. We just do ask that you sign up to let us know. So you can do that a number of ways. You can sign in the red pads that are on the inside aisles and invite you to take those to sign up in there. And there's a little place you can mark if you're coming to dinner and mark how many people and pass them along to the aisle so that we get a record of all who are here this morning to worship with us. You can also sign up. There's a sign-up sheet in Calvin Hall on the bulletin board by the elevator. And you can also call the church office. We just ask that you let us know by noon on Tuesday um, every week if you're going to be joining us for dinner so that our cooks have an idea of how many people to prepare for. And then also continuing our Lenten activities on Thursday, there's a reading and reflection group that's meeting um, via Zoom, and they are reading Wholehearted Faith 
by um, Rachel Held Evans, and everyone is invited to be a part of that conversation as well. If you want more information on that, you can talk to myself. You can also talk to um, Kathy Stockham, who's in that group as well. Um, so, next Sunday is um, the 20th of March, and our Boy Scout Troop 31 will be having their pancake feed um, supper, not supper, because it's brunch, a pancake feed following worship next Sunday down in the basement, down in the dining room, um, and that's a fundraiser for our Boy Scout troop that we support, so come hungry again, and you can have pancakes, because who doesn't like pancakes? Um, and I believe they also have like sausage and coffee and juice, but uh, everyone is invited to come to that, and there's no sign up necessary for that one, so feel free to come and to invite some friends to come with you and um, eat as many pancakes as you can. Maybe there might be a pancake eating contest. Who knows? Also happening um, next Sunday at 9 o'clock is our parent meeting, parent information meeting for the youth mission trip. Um, and that's at 9 o'clock over in Millard Hall upstairs in the youth room. So any parents of um, high school uh, age kids that are wanting to go on the mission trip, this is your opportunity to go and listen and hear about the trip itself and what it entails. Um, and for more information on that, you can talk to Martha or to Susan Kalmodo or to Ted Simmons. Um, and along those lines, there's also a youth project auction that's going on currently. So if you have any projects in your house, preferably outdoors, like if you have a large yard that needs mulched, or if you have a garage that needs painted, or if you have, I don't know, uh, leaves to be raked. <laughs> I'm just looking around my own backyard right now. Leaves to be raked, trees to be trimmed. Um, anything that our youth can do in two to three hours um, invites you to talk to Ted or Susan or Martha about our upcoming our youth auction that is actually taking place right now. So they're taking bids on projects, um, and there's a starting bid, but I didn't write that down, but you can talk to uh, Ted or Susan or Martha, and they'll let you know what that is. Um, and so it's a great way to support our youth in their upcoming summer mission trip while um, you know, getting stuff done around the house that uh, you either don't want to do or you just don't have the time and energy to do. Um, or both, in my case. So, anyway, um, that is happening now, and that's all through the month of March um, is when they're taking those bids for the auction. Um, let's see. If you are wanting to order Easter flowers, um, the deadline for ordering flowers is this Tuesday at noon, so March 15th at noon. There are order forms in Calvin Hall on the bulletin board. Um, and uh, invite you to do that. We, this year, are only ordering the flowers that we receive orders for. In years past, we've ordered, and we have lots left over, and um, so we're only ordering what we get orders for. So hopefully you will um, hear that and go, oh, I still need to do that, um, and get that done by Tuesday. Also, this coming Wednesday, at 6.30 is our Matthew 25 Forum, which happens on the third Wednesday of every month. And I um, hope that you will consider coming this Wednesday. Our guest will be Mike Forsyth of Civic Nebraska. And he will be sharing with us about um, a bill that's coming before the legislature or just came or something, um, LB 158, which is to restore voting rights to felons um, once they are released. So currently that um, law is they have to wait two years after being released before they are able to vote. And so this bill would restore that voting right. Um, and one of the important things that as a Matthew 25 church we have been looking at um, incarceration in Nebraska um, and voting rights and such. So hopefully uh, you will consider coming. That's at 6.30 on Wednesday. You can come at 5.45 for a lovely dinner. Um, and then join us in Calvin Hall for a time of, um, of information, questions, and discussion. So, whew, I think, oh, one more, sorry. Like I said, there's lots going on. Um, and the last is just a date to put on your calendar. March 27th, so the end of this month, will be our next service Sunday. Um, 
where, where we continue our worship through service. And um, this service Sunday will focus on, um, on Ukraine, on how we can support um, our Ukrainian brothers and sisters, how we can pray for them, lift them up, and, um, and various ways that we from afar can affect what's happening in our world. So hopefully you will um, put that on your calendar and consider being here for that Sunday as we worship through service that day. So I think those are all my announcements. Um, and again, I apologize, lots going on in the life of the church that I hope that you all consider being a part of because um, that's what church is about. It's, it's about the community that we build and the community that we are as we worship, grow, and serve together. At this time, I would like to invite our guest speaker for Gideon's International up. Now, this is um, Mark Peterson. So you might remember um, a number of years ago, uh, Keith Peterson was, was our regular Gideon speaker. And uh, Keith is Sherry's husband. Mark is Keith's brother. And uh, when Sherry said that the Gideons were coming, Mark volunteered and said, I want to do it. So excited to have Mark here to share with us this morning. So who is the real God? Kareeb grew up in a Hindu family in Guyana, and he asked that question. He was confused. Was it the God of the Muslims? Was it the God of the Hindu? Or was it the God of the Christians? And so as our God would have it, just a few short weeks later, he would receive a copy of that scripture at his school. And as he would learn, uh, and as he would read through the power of the Holy Spirit, he would learn that the only way to salvation was through Jesus Christ. And this had a profound impact on his life, and not just his life, but those of his parents and his siblings. And today, there's three Bible-believing generations of Christians in that household. So we praise God for the multi-effect of a single scripture given at the right time to the right person for the kingdom of God. So today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Gideons, who we are, and how you can help. First off, we're just a group of local business guys. We belong to churches in the city. We're really an extension of the church, and we have a heart for sharing God's word. You might uh, uh, think of the term Gideon's International, and it sounds like it's some great big organization with un you know, unlimited reach, and that's not the case. It's churches like First Presbyterian Church, and churches like this around our city and our state and our country that make our ministry possible. So you might ask, what is the mission of the Gideons? It's simple. It's to get, bring men and women, boys and girls, to Jesus Christ. And again, I'll say that. It's to bring men and women, boys and girls, to Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? We do that through on-site Bible distributions. We go to middle schools here in Omaha, we go to high schools, we go to college campuses, we go to hospitals, nursing homes, military induction centers, we go to prisons, people that have a real need to hear the Word of God. So it's easy for me to get up here this morning and talk a little bit about passing the Bible out it's not so easy in other parts of the world where it's very dangerous. So I do ask for your prayers this morning. Um, the other thing is, uh, if anybody here has a heart or has an interest in becoming a Gideon, I would love to talk with you. The Gideons are a little bit, we're like Gideon's army, really. We're short in numbers, but we still march on. Um, we'll be around, we'll be at the back of the service, uh, back of the church after the service. We'd love to talk with you. Um, uh, the, I guess the, the other thing I was going to say, and, and it's important, is we do ask for your prayers. Um, like I said, it's easy for me to get up and talk, but there's people around the world that are, uh, that are giving these Bibles out that put their life in danger. And uh, we have... Uh, um, the Bible printed in 90 different languages and we distribute in 200 different countries. 
Um, I want to close this morning by uh, just reading a Bible verse. And it's from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. And it really speaks to the heart of the Gideons. It says, so that the word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. I want to thank you for allowing me to speak this morning. I want to thank this church for supporting the Gideons. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. So again, uh, Mark, Mark will be at the Calvin Hall door, and I believe Sherry will be at the back door. If you have questions about Gideon's, um, feel free to ask them tough questions. Um, no, not really. Just ask them questions. Um, and we'll also be collecting an offering uh, for them. There'll be baskets at either end, as well as some information brochures about the Gideons and the work that they do. So again, thank you for being with us this morning and sharing about the importance of God's word. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you now to stand to greet your neighbors. If you're watching us online, check in. Let us know that you're there. Say hello in the chat as we worship together on this day. Good morning. Please stay standing and join in singing our first praise hymn. Savior, he can move the mountain. 
Good morning. We know God is mighty to save. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather today as an unpatient people. We believe in God's promises. God tells us that our enemies will fall our struggling will end, and we will find protection from those who want to harm us. But we must wait for the Lord. Let us worship God. confession followed by a silent time of prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for prolonged good health and for immediate healing. We ask for long-standing friendships and for love at first sight. We plead for continual self-control and for on-the-spot restraint. We understand the concept of your will be done but hope that it will be done immediately. Remind us that sometimes we have to settle for some. Help us find patience as we wait through the course of events that have to be settled in the course of time. Teach us that ultimately your plan, your will for our lives may require us to wait, but one day finally, we will forever be with you. The Lord is with us always. He loves us, protects us, and gives us what we need when he knows we need it. He forgives us in his time when we misuse our time and grants us quick mercy even when we are slow to ask. Thanks be to God. Show. 
You may be seated, and I invite the children forward. Good morning, I am so happy to see you all. So last week, we handed out these fish banks, and if you didn't get one yet, there you can have one of these, or there are some at the back, as Pastor Jenny shared. So we talked a little bit about what these are for, but I have a question for you today. Do you think that God wants everyone to have enough? Mm-hmm. You guys think? That's one of those questions where... That's kind of a hard question if we think about it. Do we really think that God wants everybody to have enough? And you guys said yes. And if the answer is yes, then what do we need to do about it? So one of the stories that we hear in the Bible, have you guys heard about when Jesus fed the 5,000? So we sometimes think about the fishes and the bread and how people didn't have enough to eat and then... Jesus talked to his disciples, and they ended up being able to share a feast so that everybody had food because not everybody had enough food. And I think that's a story that reminds us that God wants us to, for everybody to have enough. And if God wants everybody to have enough, then maybe we need to do something about it. And so these fish banks are one of the ways that we can do it, and the adults can do it too, where if you guys find a coin or um, maybe you search your couch cushions and you find some coins that you could put them, so you make the bank feed them to your and you can feed them to your fish and then you'll bring it back on Palm Sunday. And then we will share that money with people who, who maybe don't have enough. And so that's one way that we can help make sure that other people have enough. Is that fair? Can we do that? So with this week, so part of what we can do too, I've got one of these for each of you guys. Can you... Pass that one along. All right. So, what happened to you, Jenny? All right. So, each day there is like a little prayer or a little thought or a little something that you can think about or do. So, I highlighted today's to get us started. So, if we do this, then we've already done today. And then maybe tomorrow and the next day you can look and see what is going on the next day. So, today for our prayer, I'm hoping that we can all pray this one together. Um, and then you guys can go ahead and do the rest of them at home on your own. Fair enough? Okay, so let us pray. Can we pray this together? Gather us all around your banquet table, O God, with all who hunger and thirst. May we join together to share the abundance you've intended for all. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for coming up. Does anybody need one of these? And we have, and we have, there's more coloring sheets in the back too. So if you haven't colored a sheet so I can put it up in my office, you can grab one of those from the back and do that during worship today. All right, let's go back to our seats or head. Yeah, I think all of us are older, so we'll just head back to our seats.
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. The psalmist writes, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Wait. Not just wait, but wait patiently. This might just be me. It might be some of you. But I am not a very good waiter let alone to wait patiently. More often than not, I am short on patience and enjoy the instant world that I live in. I get frustrated in time, at times, honestly, most of the time, when I must wait. I dislike waiting at red lights and having to come to a complete stop at stop signs, though I always do. Don't worry, I'm a safe driver. I get irritated when I have to wait for my Amazon Prime order. It isn't always next day, and sometimes at times it takes a few days longer than I like to arrive at my doorstep. I get extremely impatient when I have to sit through commercials while watching my favorite TV shows, and I miss the days of having a DVR where I could fast forward through them and get on with the show. I even think having to wait 30 seconds about how long it takes to brew a cup of coffee in the morning is sometimes too long for me to wait. Perhaps (laughs) I'm the only one with this problem. I won't ask you to raise your hand if you are in the same boat as me, but I think there might be a few of you that this is a common ailment that we all suffer from time to time. But I also feel that in the instant world that we find ourselves in, Waiting is no longer expected. But waiting is also more than instant gratification. There are many moments in life in which we find ourselves waiting, not so patiently. It seems like these past few years have been an exercise in waiting. Two years ago this week, the world shut down for what was only to be a few weeks, and we waited patiently. Sort of. For those few weeks to pass so that we could continue on with life as usual. Well, those few weeks turned into a few months of waiting, definitely not as patiently, for the all clear to come. And soon we found ourselves in the middle of a global pandemic with no perceived end in sight. And so we waited. Anxiously, we waited for whatever was to come next. 
And in many ways today, I believe we still wait for the new normal to emerge, for this pandemic to pass, for life to carry on. And so we wait. And there are other life events where we wait. We wait for good news. We wait for bad news, for test results. We wait for surgery dates, for a treatment plan, for news from loved ones in harm's way. We wait for long-awaited family gatherings and reunions, a new baby's arrival, for weddings, big birthday celebration tr trips that have been years in the planning. We wait for the ability to hug loved ones we haven't seen in years. Waiting for those life events can seem to take ages. Waiting patiently doesn't seem possible. As we stare at our phones, waiting for news. As we watch the clock, waiting for a specific time, or the calendar, waiting for that date to finally arrive. We are always in a holding pattern always waiting for something. And I don't know that if you were like me, but I don't do well with waiting. My imagination often takes over. My nerves and my impatience gets shorter, and I'm not, and I am become a bundle of stress as I sit in the waiting, imagining the worst that could possibly happen. In those moments where these, there is this time frame, we wait. But what about waiting in the unknown, when there isn't a time frame or an end to that waiting? How do we sit and how do we wait in those moments? I think we have all been there and actually still are in this place of waiting for something and never sure of what will come next or when it will end. With the pandemic and now with the conflict in Ukraine, we wait, holding our breath, unsure of the outcome, waiting for what will come next, anxious for news, but uncertain of what we will hear. In some ways, I think that we all have adapted to waiting in the unknown. Well, in truth, I had to learn <laughs> how to adapt in order to survive. To wait with faith, to trust that God was in control and in turn surrender mine. During this long twisting season of waiting, I have found comfort in the scriptures and especially in the Psalms. And in particular, our scripture reading for today, which we heard, Psalm 27. But I wanna read it to you again and I want to invite you to hear God's word to you today. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger, so why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices of shouts of joy, singing praise to the Lord with music. Hear me, I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my mother and father abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. 
With every breath, they threaten me with violence. Yet, I am confident. I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Friends, this is God's word for us today. It is in that last phrase that I continue to come back to over and over again. I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be strong, be brave and courageous. Wait patiently for the Lord. I love the way that the message paraphrase says it. It says, stay with God, take heart, don't quit. I'll say it again, stay with God. And so we stay, we wait, we pause, we remain. Such powerful words, action words that call for very little action. How often when life gets hard and the waiting seems to be for an eternity, do we turn to God? Do I turn to God in the waiting? Instead, how often when life gets hard and the waiting seems to be an eternity, does our anxiety take over? Do we imagine the worst case scenario or get tired of waiting and go off on our own only to make things worse with our impatience? Waiting is necessary. The saying is true, good things come to those who wait. And so we wait. But I also believe it is in how we wait that good things transpire. Not waiting with fret or worry. Not waiting impatiently watching the clock as the seconds tick by. Not waiting idly, but waiting with purpose. Actively waiting. Knowing that we are waiting with faith. Waiting with God in the midst of it all. It is truly about how we wait. Wait patiently for the Lord, is how the psalmist puts it. For waiting is about faith, which brings to mind Hebrews 11.1, 1, which says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The psalmist knew this, trust in the Lord, have faith, do not despair, trust in the Lord, is how the Good News Bible translates that same verse. The truth is, we will always be waiting, entrusting our lives and futures to God as we move actively toward the life that God intends. Faith doesn't immediately or magically remove all threats and opposition. The double invitation of this psalm, wait for the Lord, encompasses the admonitions, be strong and let your heart take courage. The psalmist continues to experience threat and op opposition as do we, but it is faith that offers courage and strength to endure and to proceed toward the abundant life that God intends. The opposite of faith is not simply doubt, rather it is fear. It is worth the wait. Waiting is about trust. For faith and trust go hand in hand. As the psalmist writes, trust in the Lord, have faith, do not despair. Trust in the Lord. When we have faith, we also trust in a God who is greater than all our fears because that kind of faith, that deep trust banishes fear. Over and over again, the Bible reminds us that when we trust God, we need not fear. And the good news is that along the way, we shall certainly experience the already amid the not yet. As we walk by faith, trusting in the God who loves us, we wait patiently with courage. And friends, waiting is not passive, nor is it lacking in meaning. Rather, grounded in trust, our waiting activates and energizes the courage to move forward toward the life that God intends. And that life is worth the wait. Waiting patiently also involves sitting still, being silent and listening. Again, a difficult thing to do in this noisy instant world that we live in. 
I find with all the noise that is constantly surrounding us, it is hard to wait patiently, to sit, to stay, to not move before it's time, to not try and solve the problem on our own, to truly wait with and for God. It is in our waiting that we are to be in touch with God, not waiting passively for something to happen, but instead actively waiting with God by reading his word and spending time in prayer and being still and silent with an open heart and mind to hear what God is saying in our times of waiting. I love what the psalmist writes earlier in verse eight. He says this, he says, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. It is in our time of waiting that our hearts yearn for God. In our times of silence that we hear God's call, that we listen for God's voice and can seek God's guidance. If we never take the time to truly wait, if we are always on the move, busy with our own agenda, consumed by the noise, we may miss the lesson that is intended in our waiting. Waiting is life-giving, restorative work. It is not easy, but it is always worth the wait. So how are you waiting these days? Waiting patiently? Waiting with faith and trust? Waiting with courage and a brave heart? It's okay if you're not there because I think at all at times, all of us are in that place, impatiently waiting for what is to come. But in our waiting, we need to remember that we are not alone, but that God is in there with us. It seems that we continue in this long season of waiting now, waiting for lots of unknowns to resolve, for COVID to no longer be a pandemic for Ukraine and Russia and what is transpiring there, for our economy to bounce back from whatever is going on, waiting for the outcome, waiting for what comes next. As the entire world, it seems like now, is holding their collective breath, we wait. But may we not wait in fear but rather wait with faith. Waiting is a part of life, for we are always waiting for something. Today, maybe we be aware of how we wait. Like the psalmist says, stay with God. Take heart, don't quit. Stay with God. May we wait patiently with God with courage and a brave heart, not full of fear or overwhelmed by anxiety. Wait, stay, pause, remain. May we be filled with peace in the moment as we are assured that we do not do so alone. In our waiting, may our anxiety be replaced with trust. In our waiting, may our fear be exchanged with faith. In our waiting, may our doubt be filled with hope. In our waiting, may we always remember that we are not alone in those times when we wait. The psalmist says, friends, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. I say it again, wait on the Lord. Amen. to the heart of 
God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God, a place where we our Savior meet, near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who Please be seated. As we enter into a time of prayer together, I want to give us an opportunity to pause, to be still, and to raise our prayers that we hold deep in our hearts to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, as we gather here this day, we are grateful for so many things. Grateful for a place of worship where we can gather. Grateful for the community of believers that we gather with, whether here in person or online. We thank you for this family of church. God, we thank you for the shelter that we have, for the clothes on our back, for the food in our bellies. We thank you for so many things. And God, we are mindful of those who aren't so lucky today. And we lift to you our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, our brothers and sisters in Poland, and those bordering countries that live with the tension of what is to come. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for an end to this conflict. We pray for cooler minds to prevail, for the greater good to be considered. And God, we also pray for closer to home things. We pray for Tanya and her family on the passing of her dad. Surround her with your loving arms, God, as she mourns this loss. May she be enfolded by a community that loves and supports her and all that she needs during this time. We pray for Wayne, 
that you continue to heal his wound that this graft that he has takes and his wound is on the mend. We also pray for my Uncle Dennis and his diagnosis of ALS as he seeks next steps, as he seeks opinions from doctors. God, just pray for wisdom. Pray for a sense of peace to overwhelm him and be with the family at this time as well. God, it is with grateful hearts that we gather this day, knowing that you know all things, those things that we aren't even able to speak, not even able to put words to, but your spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for longing. And so, Lord, we lift those prayers in our hearts to you. And hear us now as we lift our voices together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And friends, as we gather here today with grateful hearts, knowing that all things we have are a gift from God our Father, we take a moment, a moment of gratitude to give back to God a portion of what God has given to us with our morning tithes and offerings. There are several ways that you can give, and those will be up on the screen for you to read. And right now, I invite the ushers to come forward to collect our gifts.
generous and loving God, we thank you for the many gifts that you give us. Help us, God, to be faithful stewards of these gifts. Help us to be aware of these blessings that we receive daily. God, may these gifts which we now give, may these monetary gifts, may they be multiplied and used for your good and your glory, both here and around the world. And we ask these things in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. shepherd lead us much we need your tender care in your pleasant pastures feed us for our use your fold prepare blessed Jesus blessed Jesus you have bought us we are yours blessed Jesus Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. We are yours in love, befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep your flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you and when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear your children when we pray. You have promised to receive. to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn Seek your favor, early let us do your will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Friends, let us wait. Not just wait, but wait patiently with and for the Lord. Let us truly have brave hearts. Let us be courageous in our waiting. Good things do come to those who wait. And knowing that we do not wait alone is always a good thing. So as you go this day, know that you do not go alone, but that God goes with you always before you, behind you, beside you, all around you, holding you tightly in the palm of his hand. And may you go and wait in peace. <laughs>